Here's a demonstration of slope detecting a narrowband FM signal on an AM receiver. What you see here is an old AM only car radio. On top is a homebrew converter that converts 2 meter FM signals down to the AM broadcast band. Although this is just an unmodified AM receiver, you can actually resolve FM if you tune off to the side of the signal. Here we are spot on the frequency and it's somewhat distorted. But tune off to the side and the signal is clear. This is not the most sensitive of receivers, there's no RF preamp, but you can adequately hear local repeaters. These repeaters would be maybe 20 or 30 kilometres away. We're tuned spot on frequency and you can hardly hear the audio. Tune a bit off and the signal is clear. Just looking at the converter in a bit more detail, what I'm pointing to now is the crystal in the local oscillator. It's a bit above 18 megahertz and it multiplies up to about 146.1 megahertz. That's actually a transmitting crystal from an old 2 meter crystal control transceiver. The oscillator here is at 18 megahertz as I said before. There's a tuned circuit here which taps the second harmonic off at 36 megahertz. Then a frequency multiplier that multiplies the frequency further. This tuned circuit here resonates at about 146 megahertz. So we're actually multiplying the crystal frequency by eight. And then there's a partition. On the other side of the partition is a one transistor mixer. That mixer takes the incoming signal this is on two motors and there's just a single tuned circuit on 146 megahertz. There's no RF preamp with this. Here's a mixing transistor. The product of the mixer is the difference between the incoming signal here, 147 megahertz say, and the local oscillator signal, 146 megahertz. That makes for a one megahertz difference which can easily be heard on this AM radio. As it happens with the crystal that I'm using, the coverage is 146.6 to 147.6, which covers all the repeater outputs and some simplex frequencies. 
one common crystal frequency is 18.432 MHz. If you multiply that by 8, you get 147.456 MHz. So if you wanted to, you could use one of those crystals and cover a portion of 2 meters. This is the crystal oscillator using an 18 MHz crystal. The collector of that oscillator is tuned to double that frequency. Here's a frequency quadrupler stage using a BF115. The collector stage is tuned to 146 megahertz approximately. This is the mixer also using a BF115. There's no RF preamp but sensitivity is adequate for local FM repeaters within maybe 30 or 40 kilometers. There's a tuned circuit at the front end set to 146 megahertz. And the output of the mixer goes directly to your AM car radio. That's got to have a shielded connection, otherwise you'll pick up breakthrough from local AM broadcast stations. There's nothing new about this arrangement. It was used about 50 years ago when people were getting onto VHF mobile AM. It largely fell into disuse when FM and repeaters came along. But as you heard before, the reception of FM signals was still acceptable. One thing you could do with this arrangement, though I haven't actually tried it, is to incorporate this in a 2 meter FM transceiver for repeater use only. The crystal oscillator and the frequency quadrupler would produce a signal on the repeater's input frequency. Those stages would still be on during receive. What would happen is a low level signal on the repeater's input would be injected into the mixer and if the car radio is tuned to 600 kilohertz, then you'll be able to hear the output of the repeater. You just have to tune it slightly off 600 and you'll be able to slope detect it in the way that I demonstrated before. For six meters, where we use a one megahertz repeater offset, then the same principle would also apply, except you tune the car radio to one megahertz. This is just a very simple way of receiving a VHF FM signal. It doesn't have a squelch, but as you heard before, the recovered audio is reasonably good. <laughs> 